minutes, we'll have one minute uh, to rebut. And uh, I will ask that you do your best to adhere to these time constraints. So the first question goes to Mr. D'Angelo, and it has to do with taxes. Uh, with our state in a financial crisis and the trickle-down fiscal effect this will have on our local town budgets, what do you see as the saving grace projects that would or could offset the potential tax increase burdens on our residential and commercial property owners? Well, I think that's a solid question, and um, we definitely need to address you know, the fiscal um, crisis that's going on in the state of Connecticut. Um, the, the big deal is, is that we need to be self-sufficient on our own, and that is with getting you know the vacancies and bringing businesses to Connecticut, uh, to Orange, um, rather, uh, just to help the burden of you know taxes going up and what the case may be there. But along along that, we need to come together as a community and start you know spending in our town, and we need to you know fill those vacancies for businesses so that it can you know we can fuel the Orange economy. Um, with that being said, with that, I think that we need to dissect our budget and see where the spending is and see what can be changed and what can uh, not be spent and take a look at the budget in a bigger picture um, rather than just spending and spending. So as long as we, you know, get businesses in here and figure out our taxes within our municipality, then we can look at the bigger picture and how to save money. Thank you. Okay. And Ms. Novicki? Thank you. Um, first of all, I think that it's very good that our state legislators were able to come together in a bipartisan fashion and agree on a budget that, uh, at least for the next two years, will not in any dramatic way uh, raise taxes. Um, however, this is just uh, the, the first step in what is going to be a long process to uh, sort out uh, the financial difficulties at the state level and how they impact upon municipalities like Orange. So of course we will have to be fiscally cautious and fiscally wise. I think in terms of how we offset the tax burden on our, on our individual taxpayers, the most important way we can do that is by having stronger economic growth in Orange and having more commercial, a bigger commercial tax base, which will then help us hopefully to level off uh, taxes and to have them to stop them from continuing to go up as they have by 28 percent over the last 10 years. We need to level that off, and then we should also look at where we can find efficiencies in the way we work. I will plan on meeting with every town department when I'm first selectman to go over our budget to see where we might be able to create new efficiencies and savings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scully. Thank you. Currently, the town of Orange is very fortunate. We have an elected board of finance, members of whom were introduced here earlier this morning. That group starts usually in January and a snowy meeting in February, uh, often seems to be the case, going line by line through that budget working with each department. Every single department comes in for review in front of that committee. It's an all-day event. Any of you are welcome to participate, sit and watch that event, or attend any of the Board of Finance meetings. Many people talk about their concerns over vacancies or what isn't. You know, there was a very nice restaurant just went out of business down on the post road. It has a lot of wood. I'll say that about it. Um, their personal property tax on that was about $8,400. You still receive the tax for the building, the property, and all that goes with it. When CompUSA went out of business, you still received the tax for the property. You lost $6,000 in personal property, which is shelving and technology and stuff that goes with it. While that's not a good thing, it's not what's being portrayed. You still are generating an income from those properties. Would we like them all full? Absolutely. Will we find developers to fit some of these? Absolutely. You see the Briner property right out to say Hitchcock Plaza is currently being cleaned up. It was absolutely disgraceful. It was run down and it's worn out. We have a user that's cleaning that site up to take it over and we're very thrilled with that. Uh, uh, 84,000 square foot building on 
Well, the lane that has sat vacant for way too many years, partly because of stop and shop, partly because of just its own demise. We met with the developers who are taking a lease out on that. Probably this week if that hasn't happened already. So there's a lot going on, a lot more that is being portrayed. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, question is on the subject of education.